Welcome back to the deep dive. Today, we're searching for that uh, holy grail of investing, right? Trying to build a stock portfolio that doesn't just like sit there, but actually, you know, grows, but also doesn't give us all heart attacks every time the market takes a dip. And, well, we found some really fascinating research that might just hold the key. The thrill is in the chase. Exactly. So buckle up because we're diving headfirst into the world of hierarchical momentum, and to help us navigate these somewhat complex waters, I've got our expert right here with me. Happy to be here. Always love geeking out about this stuff. So this paper we're diving into, it starts off by pointing out something I think a lot of us have probably felt. You know, you hear about these fancy Nobel Prize winning portfolio strategies. Right. The Markowitz model. The problem is, well, they don't always work quite as well in the real world, do they? Yeah, they're great ideas in theory. But the market, it's evolved. It's like, imagine trying to use a map from the 1800s to navigate a modern city, you know? I like that analogy. The amount of data we have about the stock market now is just, it's overwhelming for these older models. It's like feeding them too much information and they just get indigestion, can't handle it. Exactly. And then what happens is they might actually end up suggesting portfolios that are way too risky. Yeah. You know? concentrated in just a handful of assets. Yeah, not exactly the recipe for, you know, sound sleep at night. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we need something a bit more robust, something yeah. that can handle the data deluge and still give us, you know, good directions. Precisely. And that is where this idea of hierarchical momentum or HM, this is where it comes in. Right. And it's really fascinating because it's like combining the best of, well, two different investing worlds momentum and then this idea of diversification. It is, it's a really interesting approach. So let's break that down a bit. For those of us who maybe skipped finance class, what exactly is IS momentum investing? Well, the simplest way to think about it is, it's like that saying, ride the hot hand. It's based on the idea that stocks that have performed well recently, there's a good chance they'll continue to do so for at least a little while longer, you know? So kind of like sticking with the winner, or at least for a bit, hoping the streak continues. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But of course, we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. Right? Yeah. We want to diversify. And that's where hierarchical clustering comes into play. Okay, so now we're adding baskets to the mix. I'm intrigued, but I need a visual. What is hierarchical clustering? Okay, so imagine you walk into, I don't know, a giant buffet, right? The stock market buffet, if you will. I'm with you. Now, instead of just randomly piling food on your plate, you decide to be strategic about it. So you group similar dishes together, maybe all the seafood in one spot, all the desserts in another, right? You're creating these categories. That's essentially what hierarchical clustering does. But with stocks, you're grouping them together based on how similar their price movements are. Mm. So you're creating baskets of stocks based on, you know, their behavior, their personality in the market. Ah, okay. So finding stocks that what, like to move together up or down, sort of like dance partners on the market floor? Exactly, that's a great way to put it. So with hierarchical momentum, instead of like just chasing after the single hottest stock out there, we're trying to pick winners from these different kind of categories. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly, you got it. You're diversifying your risk by going after those top performers, but within these like carefully chosen groups. Okay, makes sense to me so far. But how did this strategy actually do in the real world? Did it live up to the hype? Well, that's where it gets even more interesting. The researchers actually tested this whole thing out using, get this, real market data. Okay, that's good. And not just some small experiment either. They use a huge global index. This is like the big leagues of testing. Okay, you've got my attention. Give me the good stuff. What happened? All right, so drum roll, hierarchical momentum it consistently outperformed the usual benchmark strategies. No way, really? Yeah, and we're not just talking about slightly better either. We're talking significantly better returns and like across almost every way you can measure it. Okay, hold on, hold on. Break it down for me. What does better look like in the real world, like in my actual portfolio? Well, for starters, think higher returns, of course, but, and this is important, we're also talking about potentially smoother sailing. Yeah. Fewer of those like yeah. terrifying drops that make you want to sell everything and you know hide under the table. Okay, so you're saying this approach, it might actually help me sleep better at night because that's a plus? Exactly, less stress. Because you see, 
it showed lower volatility in their tests, which means fewer dramatic swings. Right, right. And get this, HM even had smaller drawdowns than the other strategies. Drawdowns, those are those like gut-wrenching drops, right? Where it feels like your stomach is in your throat. Exactly. And remember we talked about those risk-adjusted return ratios, like the Sharpe ratio and the Sortino ratio. Vaguely. Refresh my memory, what are those again? Oh, they basically measure like how much extra return you're getting for each unit of risk you're taking on. Oh, okay, right, gotcha. And guess what? HEM, it scored higher on those too. It's like finding a unicorn in the investing world. Okay, color me impressed, but um, there's gotta be a catch, right? It all sounds a little too good to be true. Well, you're right to be, you know, a little cautious. Past performance is never a guarantee and all that. And this is just one study after all. True, true. But still, it's a very compelling one. It is, I've got to admit. So how does it actually work? Like, what's going on under the hood that makes it tick? Well, that's where things get, like, really elegant. You see, it's not just D about momentum, and it's not just D about diversification, right? It's the way those two things work together. That's where the magic happens. They're like a dynamic duo? Exactly. Yeah. Because, you see, diversification, it helps smooth out some of the volatility that can come with just blindly following momentum. Right, because even hot stocks, they can cool down eventually, and no one wants to be left holding the bag when that happens. Exactly. But by diversifying across these carefully chosen groups of similar stocks, you're spreading your risk, right? Mm. And so you're potentially capturing more of those upward trends over time. So it's like you get to aim for those high returns, but you've got a safety net too, just in case. I like it. That's a great way to put it. And there's another layer to this too that I find really, really fascinating. The researchers, they found that hierarchical momentum's performance, it couldn't be fully explained by those usual market factors. What do you mean? It's like it's tapping into something, well, deeper some kind of hidden pattern in the market that goes beyond our traditional ways of thinking about risk and return. Okay, now that is intriguing. So it's like HM and has like a sixth sense for the market or something? In a way, yes. And that is what makes this research so groundbreaking. Because it suggests there might be more to discover about how markets really work. Okay, my mind is officially blown. But let's say I wanted to actually try this H&M approach out for myself. How would I go about doing that? What are the like practical steps involved? That's a great question. Well, it all starts with data. <laughs> you need a way to measure how similar or different stocks are. You know, based on their price movements. It's like mapping the DNA of the stock market. You know, yeah. You're looking for those hidden family resemblances. Right. So like building that, that stock market family tree we were talking about earlier. Exactly. Right. You need a reliable way to figure out like who's related to whom. And then you can start grouping those stocks into their, their respective baskets or clusters. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So once we've got our little uh, stock market family reunion all sorted out, what's next? Then the fun begins. Within each of those clusters, you then look for the stock that has the highest momentum. The one that's like, had the best recent performance. So it's like a competition within a competition. Precisely. Yeah. And the winner from each of those clusters, they earn a spot in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. So you're creating like a team of champions, but from different divisions of the market. And because those divisions, those clusters, they're based on those real underlying similarities and how the stocks actually behave, you're also building in that layer of diversification and, you know, risk management. You got it. It's like having an all-star team where each player also has a backup plan. Right. Just in case they get injured or something. I love that analogy. So instead of just like betting on these individual superstar stocks, I'm building a whole team. Right. With depth and resilience. Yes, precisely. And here's the best part. This approach, it isn't static. It like adjusts as the market changes. Oh, tell me more about that. How does it adapt? So as stocks move up and down, their relationships with other stocks, those can shift too. Okay. You know, a stock that used to behave a certain way, it might start acting more like a different group of stocks. So they switch teams mid-season. In a way, yeah. And so when you recalculate those relationships, your portfolio, it reflects those changes too. Oh, wow. So you're not stuck with a static lineup. You're constantly kind of adjusting and adapting your strategy based on how the market is actually behaving. So it's dynamic. It's adaptable. It's like 
It's like having a portfolio that can like learn and evolve. That's seriously cool. It is. And there's another risk management feature built into all of this that I think is worth kind of highlighting too. Okay, what's that? So remember how we were talking about choosing the stock with the highest momentum within each cluster? Yeah, yeah. the winner from each group. Right. So, so if a stock actually has like negative momentum, meaning it's actually been on a downswing, you just don't include it, yeah. even if it was a top performer before. Ah, so no throwing good money after bad. Got it. Exactly. You're cutting your losses and focusing on those stocks that are actually showing that positive momentum. Makes perfect sense. So we've got diversification, we've got momentum, we've got risk management. This hierarchical momentum approach, it really does seem to have it all. It's a very, very compelling combination. Mm -hmm. And if the researchers' findings, you know, if they hold up in the real world, this kind of strategy, it could be a game changer. Wow. And not just for individual investors, but potentially for, like, the entire financial industry. So you're saying yeah. this could be the future of investing? It's definitely a glimpse into what's possible. And, you know, one of the most exciting aspects of all of this is... You were saying there's something really exciting about all of this. What is it? Oh, it's just, it's like... HM, this whole approach, it's almost like it's, you know, it's tapping into something that, like, traditional finance, it hasn't quite figured out yet. Remember how we were talking about his performance and how it couldn't be totally explained by those, you know, those standard market factors? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's picking up on these, like, these hidden signals or something. It's like almost like a secret language of the market. You it's know? like we can see around corners. I don't know, that's both incredible and, like a little spooky at the same time. I know, right? <laughs> it's wild. And for me, that's what makes it so exciting because it tells us there's so much more to learn. This isn't just about, you know, squeezing out a slightly bigger return. This is about potentially like unlocking a whole new level of understanding about how markets really work. Yeah, okay, I'm sold. I want to explore this more. Where do I even begin? Like, what are some of the things I should be thinking about? Especially if I wanted to, you know, to dip my toes into this hierarchical momentum thing myself. I love the enthusiasm. Well, first things first, we gotta remember that as promising as all of this research is, it's really just one piece of the puzzle, right? It's okay. like we've stumbled upon this new, potentially much more accurate map. Okay. But we still need to kind of, like, test it out, see how it holds up in different terrains, you know? So, what kind of terrain should we be looking at here? Like, what else do I need to keep in mind? Well, we need to see how HM performs in, like, different market conditions, right? Because the stock market, it's a beast. Tell me about it. It can be, like, calm and predictable one minute and then, bam, total chaos the next. Yeah. So, how do we know HM can handle the tough times just as well as it seems to handle the good times. That's what we need to figure out. All right. Right, makes sense. We need more research. We need to look at how it does over longer time periods across, you know, different economic cycles. And, and keep in mind too, this particular paper, it really focused specifically on global stocks. That's right, it did. Hmm, but okay, my portfolio, it isn't just stocks, right? So what about other stuff like bonds? or real estate. Exactly, that's a great point. And that's something I would love to see, personally. Like, could we apply these same HM principles to those other asset classes too? Could we build like a truly diversified portfolio where the whole thing is like, is greater than the sum of its parts? That's the dream, to find that like one strategy that rules them all. Absolutely. And here's something else that I think is like really tantalizing to think about. The paper, they used a pretty well, pretty straightforward way of measuring momentum, right? Uh, they were right. just looking at those past price returns. But what if we got a little more, I don't know, creative? What if we started incorporating other kinds of signals too? Like maybe we look at earnings surprises or, you know, those analyst ratings, and we use that to create a more, shall we say, nuanced momentum measure. So we could, what, like personalize it a bit more, tailor it to like our own investment style or our goals. I like where this is going. Exactly. And that's honestly, that's what's so exciting about all this is like hierarchical momentum. It's not just some, you know, rigid formula. It's a starting point. It's an invitation to explore. 
and to push the boundaries of what we thought was possible in investing. An invitation I am happy to accept. This has been incredible. Thank you so much for, you know, for walking me through all of this and for being such a fantastic guide on this deep dive into hierarchical momentum. You've given me so much to think about and clearly a lot of rabbit holes to go down. My pleasure. That's what the deep dive is all about. We're here to spark that curiosity, you know, mm -hmm. challenge some assumptions and hopefully give you the tools to just to think differently about your investments. Absolutely. And for everyone listening, if you'd like to take your own deep dive into hierarchical momentum, we'll be sure to include links to the research paper, along with some other resources we think you'll find helpful over in the show notes. Happy investing, everyone. And until next time, keep exploring those fascinating corners of the market. Who knows what you might discover?